All right, welcome to another video for chemistry. In this video, we're going to be exploring the properties of aqueous solutions. All right, so let's look at that word solution. We're not talking about a solution to a problem or a question so much as we're talking about a, uh, a mixture of compounds. So again, what does that word solution mean? Well, to understand this word, we're gonna be looking at two different things. The two things that make up a solution. The first one is what's called a solute and the second is a solvent, okay? So these two things, when you combine them together, you make an aqueous solution, or at least in this particular video, we're going to be discussing aqueous solutions. Aqueous solutions are uh, can be a solute, that is a liquid or a solid, and the solvent is usually, in this case, water. Actually, it's always going to be water, H2O, okay? So we're talking about a solute, which is either a liquid or a solid. So we're going to be mixing a solid or a liquid and we're going to be putting that into the solvent which is water. Okay. So there's two types of solutes that we're going to discuss. Okay. So hopefully as we go along in this video uh, and breaking the, this these terms down uh, it'll become more clear as to what each of these represents. So let's look at what a solute is or the types of solutes. There's electrolytes and non-electrolyte. So before I move on uh, one of the things that I've always used to help me, uh, like back when I was in high school, to understand the relationship between a solute and a solvent, and remember both of these combined make a solution, uh, I try to picture somebody robbing a bank and they're escaping through the air vents. So if you, have, if you picture a robber carrying the money bag, the loot, the loot will go into the vent, okay? So the loot always goes into the vent. In this case, the solute always goes into the solvent. So the lute goes into the vent, all right? All right, so non-electrolyte and non-electrolyte. All right, so both of these are, um, I have two beakers with a solution that are both non-electrolytes. All right, so what I'm going to do to one of the, one of the solutions, uh, the one on the right, I'm going to put in salt tablets. All right, I know they're green. Uh, I just made them green so that you can have a better view of them behind the white background. So I have the salt, the salt tablets and I'm going to throw them into my beaker on the right and you're going to notice that they're going to dissolve. If I were to able to have um, atom vision, okay, now I can see plainly uh, when I pour salt into water that it dissolves, but what I can't see is what is actually happening to each individual atom in the salt. So salt is made out of sodium chloride sodium and chlorine combined together. Sodium is a metal, chlorine is a very dangerous gas. Um, if you go back into World War II, uh, mustard gas, chlorine was one of the main components, the mustard gas, which caused so much harm to, um, to the soldiers in World War I. All right, but I'll make a separate video with that uh, when we talk about um, Fritz Haber and uh, some of the chemistry that he uh, was able to develop. So anyways, so salt. Salt will go into water, and you're going to notice that these water molecules will attach themselves to the salt particles, or the atoms, and what's going to happen is that this, these water molecules will eventually separate each sodium and each chlorine atom away from each other, and they're going to completely dissociate, or they will dissolve from one another, okay? So you end up having dissolved salt in the water. And that dissolved salt actually turns a non-electrolyte fluid into an electrolyte fluid, which makes it a very strong conductor of electricity, okay? Now, you know that water conducts electricity, but when you have a, a dissolved salt, dissolved ions in water, it actually makes it an even stronger electrolyte. So what happens here uh, with a non-electrolyte, you have two probes here, these two copper probes that I have pictured here. Okay, so if I was to send an electrical signal or attempt to send an electrical signal in between these to close the circuit, right, so I can light the light bulb, um, I wouldn't be able to as efficiently with this because it's a non-electrolyte and it won't pass on the electrical charge as easily. But if I try to do that with uh, an electrolyte fluid, what I'm going to find is that these sodium and chlorine ions that have separated and evenly dispersed throughout the, the liquid, the aqueous solution that's an electrolyte, what's going to happen is that these ions will actually be able to pass on a charge much more easily. And when they do that, 
When they do that, they're going to be able to close the circuit and actually conduct electricity and light up the light bulb. Okay, so henceforth, that's why it's called an electrolyte. Okay, because it passes on, it's able to pass on an electric signal, electricity. You might be familiar with uh, this electrolyte, Gatorade. Uh, Gatorade is full of uh, different salts like magnesium, um, sodium, lithium. These are all electrolytes. These are all ions, little tiny uh, metal atoms that help pass on a charge. Now, why would you need electrolytes in the body? Well, the body conducts electricity all the time, from brain signals to muscular contractions. So whenever you're low on salts, like if you're sweating a lot for playing basketball or what have you, uh, it's always good to replenish those salts. Unfortunately, with Gatorade, you also get a lot of extra sugars, but that's for another uh, video. So taking a step back and looking at what an aqueous solution is, Okay, remember, aqueous solution involves two things, the solute and the solvent. So the solution, a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Okay, so again, the solute, okay, the solute is our salt. Okay, and both of these combined together make an aqueous solution. All right, so that was a good little review there. So let's talk about the strength of electrolytes. Now, not all electrolytes are created even, okay? Some of them are much stronger, and some of them are much weaker than the other. Now, what determines the strength of an electrolyte, an electrolyte is the amount of dissociation that occurs, okay? How well does a compound dissociate in water, or how well does it break apart in water? The more that it breaks apart, the more that that compound dissociates the stronger the electro electrolyte will be created. So here I have a table of some uh, some strong, weak, and non-electrolyte compounds. All right, so let's take a look at, here are some of the examples for the strong electrolytes, hydrochloric acid, uh, nitric acid, um, chloric acid, okay, acetic acid, hydrofluoric acid, so, and then some non-electrolytes, some of the uh, sugar families. Uh, sugars will not dissociate completely in, um, in water. So let's see what these would look like in an actual chemical equation. So if I have hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid, if I mix it in with water, you're going to have a complete dissociation between hydrogen and chlorine. Okay. Now, uh, this is something that I'll spend a little bit more time on with 4.3 as far as uh, acids. Um, but so, so anyway, so hydrogen ions and chlorine ions would dissociate. Let's take a closer look. Again, if we had that atom vision, we would be able to see that when I combine water, right? This is my water tank, and I have a gas container. I'm going to fill it up with hydrochloric acid. And when I mix the two together, okay, the water molecules, all the hydrogen ions, which are positively charged, will attach themselves to the negatively charged chlorine and all of my negatively charged oxygens will attract themselves to the positively charged hydrogen and what's going to happen is that these electrical charges are going to separate the chlorine from the hydrogen okay now notice here that the hydrogen that was separated it attaches to the water molecule okay this is a hydrated hydrated hydrogen ion or a hydronium ion Okay, I'll explain this in a second here, but you'll notice here that that chlorine ions are now by themselves, a complete dissociation. So this is a strong electrolyte, okay? So chlorine ions are in an aqueous solution because now they are just floating around in the water, so it's aqueous, and we represent that by having the AQ in parentheses, okay? All right, so again, notice before uh, with my hydrogen ions. Uh, this is how I represent the hydrogen ion. But if I were to depict this in the most accurate way possible in this equation, I would actually have it shown as a hydronium ion like this. Okay? But just for simplicity's sake, to make it easier, I represent it this way, showing you that the hydrogen ion dissociates from the chlorine ion. But again, the more accurate depiction would be this. Okay? All right. So let's move on to our nitric acid. Nitric acid, just like hydrochloric acid, because it's a strong electrolyte, you're going to be able to separate the hydrogen ion from the nitrate ion. Okay, and the same thing with salt. We've already looked at salt a couple of times. In fact, let's take a closer look at salt right now. Okay, 
So the salt, it's sodium chloride, will dissolve into the solvent. You have a complete dissociation, and now you have an aqueous solution. Okay? All right, so that was an example of salt. Now with weak electrolytes, okay, so if I look at this particular molecule called um, acetate, okay, or acetic acid actually, it would make acetate. Uh, acetic acid, when I combine it with water, okay, and now you'll notice it, acetic acid is in a aqueous solution. When I combine it with water, a liquid, you're gonna dissociate one of the hydrogen ions. This hydrogen will dissociate Okay, into a hydronium ion or hydrogen ion, and then I will leave this ion on its own. Okay, now what can happen is that this can actually reverse, and these two compounds or these two species will combine to make acetic acid once again. It is a reversible reaction, it can go back and forth, and that's why I have the arrows pointing uh, in both directions because it's a weak electrolyte. Again, weak electrolyte, I can have a reversal of these molecules switching places back and forth. By contrast, hydrochloric acid does not reverse. Hydrogen ions remain separated from the chlorine ions. This is not a reversible reaction. This is a strong electrolyte. All right, this is an example problem from the book. Uh, the diagram here shows three compounds. Here I have compound A, which is AB2. Okay, so a molecule A, B2, so that means I have uh, atom A combined with, should be combined with two Bs, and same thing here, I have C, or A, C2, and then my compound C is A, D2. So my question is, or my uh, what I'm supposed to do is determine which is the strongest electrolyte. All right, so let's start with A. Let's compare A to, the, to B and C. So if I look at molecule A, I have AB2. So I have here a molecule that's still intact, AB2, and I have another one, that's two. So two out of the five molecules are still intact. Okay, so I have had some dissociation. So whatever the fluid in here, the water, has been able to take apart three of these molecules, and two of them are still intact. So is it a complete dissociation? No. So is it a strong electrolyte? Uh, probably not. Well, let's compare it to B and see if we can uh, see if it'll clear it up a bit. If we look at letter B, letter B has five molecules, and I notice that all of the molecules are completely dissociated. If you compare that with A, I would say that B is a strong electrolyte compared to A. So this is probably the strongest electrolyte. Now let's compare C. C, you'll notice that there are still four molecules that are intact, and only one of them has dissociated. So this is probably our weakest, our weakest electrolyte. I would even say, go as far as to say this is a non-electrolyte, okay? Or maybe not non-electrolyte, this is just the weakest electrolyte. So this is the strongest for sure, and this would be a, uh, a weak electrolyte, and letter C is the weakest electrolyte. All right, well, that does it for Section 1, General Properties of Aqueous Solutions, and uh, good luck in your studying.